Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Dr. Ma'an al-Barri. I'm greatly honored and excited to be moderating this Prevention of Madness virtual, uh, virtual session 2021. In this session, we'll be covering an interesting new innovative pinhole implant technology that has gained in popularity and redeemed hope for the visually disabled from complex corneal surfaces due to irregular astigmatism from keratectasia, corneal scarring, post-RK and corneal transplant surgeries. Our first speaker will be Dr. Claudio Cansado Trinidadji from Brazil. He's an eye surgeon with experience in anterior segment surgery, including cataract surgery, corneal refractive surgery, phacic eye implantation, and keratoconus treatment. Our second speaker will be Professor Satish Srinivasan. He's a consultant corneal surgeon at University Hospital Air. He's professor of health and life sciences at the University of West Scotland, UK. Our third speaker will be Professor Gerald Affart, Professor and Chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology, University of Heidelberg, Director of the International Vision Correction Research Center, Heidelberg, Germany. Our first lecture is the Prevention of Blindness Shield Award lecture titled Mastering Pinhole Implants in Various Challenging Scenarios. Dr. Claudio Trinidadji. Dear friends from Saudi Arabia, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in the Saudi Ophthalmology 2021. For me, it's a great privilege and honor to be part of this faculty. Today, we'll talk about a very interesting topic, one that I'm very enthusiastic about, and I'm very happy to share with you this, our experience with small aperture optics, and especially in the scenario of challenging cases. So without further ado, let's start here the presentation. And, and as Leonardo da Vinci would say, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And here we're going to present a very simple concept, yet it can be very powerful in the treatment of challenging cases. And this is what I'm trying to present. I do have a license agreement with Marcher, who manufactures the extra focus pinhole implant. So we, before we start, we must give credit to the work of Dr. Peter Choice who in the 60s presented the first intraocular implant, which had a pinhole mask embedded in its acrylic uh, uh, material. It was called the Mark V implant, and it was manufactured by Rayner back then. Today, we have currently two models of uh, pinhole implants one that is uh, made by Mortar and the IC8 IOL made by AccuFocus. The main difference here is that the Mortar Extra Focus does not have any refractive power. It's, it is solely a, a small aperture diaphragm. It's not actually a lens, while the IC8 is an intraocular lens with a pinhole mask in its interior. And of course, the the great pot of gold of the ophthalmic industry is the treatment of presbyopia and its huge market. However, I believe that the small aperture optics is not the best option uh, in regards to the correction of pseudophagic presbyopia. And in my opinion, the greatest advantage of pinhole optics is in the treatment of irregular corneal astigmatism. And my specific preference is in the treatment of keratoconus, as I will present. And with this uh, very large incidence of keratoconus in Saudi Arabia, I'm very enthusiastic to present this concept in this meeting. So you might be asking, is this a, are we going back to the pilocarpin? Is this as simple as uh, just using pilocarpin? And the answer is no. The main beauty of pinhole implants is the fact that it opens the door to lens a, to a lens-based treatment for corneal problems. And that's where its power resides. So our experience started in 2013, and we grew this experience with very interesting and challenging cases. Here we can see post-PK cases, keratoconus, post-RK, corneal laceration with iris loss, 
and post RK. And of course, the most obvious indication is when we have a combination of a irregular cornea like this. Here we have a large superior corneal laceration with, uh, combined with this large pupil caused by this traumatic uh, corneal laceration. So this is the ideal combination, a irregular cornea and a large pupil. And as our experience expanded, we became more conscious of the best cases. And that's where, this is what I wanna share with you because I'm talking specifically about keratoconus. And so I wanna share with you this, this case here. This is a 38 year old man who underwent a penetrating graft in his left eye for the treatment of advanced keratoconus. However, the result was not as he expected. In spite of a very clear graft, his uncorrected vision would not pass 2080. And because of this high magnitude, somewhat regular astigmatism, this is the most common complication of a penetrating graft, a large magnitude astigmatism. And he was not pleased with, with the result. He expected a better vision. So he tried to manage his right eye uh, in a different way. So in, in the attempt to avoid a graft in his right eye, he underwent corner ring segment implantation, which had a very minor result. And his uncorrected vision was still very poor. So here we see the best corrected vision. In the right eye, he had a highly myopic refraction and his vision would not pass 2080. And in his left eye with a corneal graft, he would reach 2040 with a high cylindrical correction. However, when we throw a pinhole occluder on top of this refraction in the right eye, he suddenly sees better and he's happy with the sharpness of the image. And he asks me uh, if, uh, is there a, a way to see this way? And my point here is to show you that there is a way. So instead of focusing on the cornea, we suggested a clear lens extraction with an IOL implantation and a primary piggyback of the extra focus pinhole implant in his right eye. He was hopeless. He did a corneal ring segment implantation. He already had a corneal graft in his left eye and he couldn't tolerate contact lenses. So he just didn't have any other options. So here's surgery. We performed a routine lens surgery here with manual capsorexis, hydrodissection and hydrodelineation, and lens material that was aspirated without ultrasound, and we made sure to polish the interior leaflet of the capsular bag. And here a low-powered IOL is placed in the bag, and now is the moment of truth. The extra focus is placed inside the capsular bag together with the IOL. Both implants are placed inside the capsular bag. And this is my number one suggestion. Whenever possible, use the capsular bag to ensure long-term centration and stability. So this is the eye at the end of the surgery. And here is, here is his vision before surgery and after. He was finally pleased with his vision after so much effort in the treatment of keratoconus. He was finally able to see uncorrected 2040 and with a very discreet refraction and a modest pair of spectacles, he could reach 2030 vision with sharpness. So this is the eye with a corneal graft. A very good looking corneal graft in here. 
his original cornea was kept and a pinhole implant is inside his eye and with an unmatched, uncorrected visual acuity. This patient was very, very pleased. So, so the main take home message here is this successful result was not only due to the pinhole. It is very important to properly select the IOL power, and that comes with its challenges, especially in keratoconus. And this image shows the extra focus implant perfectly placed inside the capsular bag without any problems, without any interlenticular opacification or any other problems and with a much better centration <clears throat> than in the sulcus. So in order to do this, we, uh, this is for a very specific niche uh, of keratoconus patients. And number one prerequisite is to have a stable topography. If, and if there is any chance of progression of the disease, our focus needs to be on halting this progression with anti-rubbing treatment, with corneal cross-linking, and so on. As I mentioned, the cornea requires a minimal uh, optical quality. So, of course, we need a transparent cornea with a mean keratometry of around 56. We prefer a central, centrally located ectatic area. We found that this is the group that, uh, that ends up with the best vision. And special, this is especially interesting for those patients with large pupils. If the pupil is al already small, then the pinhole implant, of course, will be, will, won't be useful. So anything around 3.5 millimeter in mesopic conditions would be a, a good candidate. And we should avoid longer eyes because of the risk of retinal issues. Of course, we're dealing with younger patients and we are considering clear lens extraction. And always have a retinal surgeon on your side to examine this patient and, and ensure that there's no risk of retinal issues in the future. The main drawbacks here are a darkening sensation that some patients might experience and some halos around focal light sources such as a, a headlight or a traffic light. However, if we address these issues preoperatively and, and if there is a good selection of the best candidates, this is absolutely not a problem. And visual field constriction is not a concern because of the proximity of the pinhole implant with the nodal point of the eye, there is no visual field constriction if the implant is well centered. And this, the material of the extra focus has the amazing property of being transparent to infrared light. And this way you can check structures located behind the implant, like the toric marks of this uh, IOL behind the implant and other structures like capsular opacities and so on. And this, this is the last slide here. I just want to share that it's possible to perform vitreoretinal retinal surgery with the device inside the eye. This is a courtesy uh, of Dr. Andre Maia from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He did this beautiful case of posterior vitrectomy uh, through the extra focus, and he was able to perform uh, laser photoagulation using a, uh, an endoscope. So this is just to highlight that it is possible to perform this type of surgery with this implant. Well, and this concludes my presentation. I hope it is useful. If you found this topic interesting, feel free to shoot me an email. And thanks again for inviting me for this virtual conference. I okay, thank you very much. Okay, by this we conclude um, the this, uh, this discussion and now we'll go to the SHIELD Award. Um, it gives me great pleasure um, to announce and present this year's Prince Ahmed bin Abdulaziz SHIELD Provincial of Blindness. Um, it's an award that is um, presented to dedicate the ophthalmologist whose exceptional contributions in the prevention of blindness has made a positive impact. This year's 2021 SHIELD Award has been awarded 
to a passionate innovator of the novel small aperture diaphragm implant, which has filled the hopes of the visual disabled from iglal astigmatism due to corneal scarring, uh, keratoconus, post lasik ectasia, and post RK surgeries and others. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge this year's Prince Ahmed bin Abdelaziz Shield Award for Position of Blindness to Dr. Claudio Cansadio Trinidadji. Well, thank you very much for the entire Saudi ophthalmic community. This is for me a true honor given the, the, this faculty. And, and for me, it's, a, it's always been a great, a great uh, pleasure to speak about this, this uh, this concept and it's such an incredible uh, overwhelming feeling to see this being translated into other people uh, uh, admiring this or, or, or uh, being involved with this so for me it's it's truly a, a, a great honor thank you very much thank you welcome so by this we conclude our prevention of blindness session i would like to thank our international speakers for kindly accepting our invitations and to thank you, our audience, for your attendance and wonderful interaction. And I would like to thank Dr. Hudal Ghadir for her amazing contributions in assisting me in arranging this session. And we hope to see you all in another SOS Provincial Blindness Session. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.